Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, when I was younger, back when I had some hair on my head, I used to lift weights, just recreationally. I wasn't a bodybuilder or anything like that. Just wanted to look good, right? <clears throat> and back in that day, I used to take something called creatine, right? I actually dabbled with creatine. And I dabbled with human growth hormone, right? Now, I'll just say this. With creatine, I learned about creatine from watching professional sports, right? I was a big sports fan. And understand, there's a lot of revisionist history going on. A lot of it. In the 1990s, we knew guys were juicing, right? It really wasn't that much of a secret. If you go back to 1988, and if you look at the World Series, the Kirk Gibson game, Right, Dodgers against the Oakland A's, you're going to see that Jose Canseco's last at bat has the Dodger fans cheering, steroids, steroids, right? We suspected guys were on steroids back then, right? Um, people talked about things that weren't quite considered PEDs which were supposed to enhance your performance, like creatine. I can tell you I took some creatine. I hopped in my car. Man, I started getting dizzy spells. You want to talk about cramps? I'm sure there's some people here watching this video who took creatine who know the kind of cramps I'm talking about. I had to get off creatine with the quickness. Let's just say when I fooled around with human growth hormone, and let me be clear, I didn't have a prescription, I wasn't going to a doctor, I was taking some concoction that really wasn't HGH, it was HGH factor, right? It was supposed to spur the HGH in your body. Let's just say that I never slept more soundly in my life. I slept so deeply, there were mornings I woke up in my own bedroom and didn't know where the hell I was right let's just say I used to be one of these uh, weekend warrior type guys right nine to five job hit the gym then on the weekend hit the park play a lot of ball and I'd be sore I'd be real sore I started taking this HGH thing I'd wake up the next day no soreness no fatigue right I view PEDs like I view hair color. In other words, you're walking around and you're noticing a lot of 50 and 60 year olds, a lot of 40 year olds, and nobody has any gray. Right? I know women know what I'm talking about. Right? You see a lot of people who are middle aged and nobody has a lot of gray. You suspect that a lot of people are coloring their hair. Right? But no one really openly talks about it. You look at these political candidates, especially presidential candidates, and you're not going to see a lot of gray, or you're going to see less gray than you think the person actually has. Right? They claim Elvis had a full head of gray here at the time of his death that he was dying. Right? I think athletes view PED use like that. You see a lot of people, they're built, they're buff, they look better than they did when they were younger, right? And you understand that there's some augmentation there, that it's not all beans and rice, that maybe there are things like creatine, human growth hormone, maybe even more potent stuff in the mix, right? I'm telling you from personal knowledge that with HGH, or at least HGH boosters, right? That sore knee and stuff like that, 
you know, those sore calf muscles, you know, that sore back, suddenly it's gone. Your body just seems to be rejuvenating itself on a different level, right? Now let's talk about this fight coming up between Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather, right? I believe Alex Ariza is the third most important person involved in this fight. Now I'm not accusing anyone of steroid use. I'm not. Right? I'm not saying anyone gave anyone steroids. Let's be clear here. Right? The reason this subject matter is never discussed too often is because people who discuss it understand they're at risk of getting sued. So I have to have this disclaimer up front. But just close your eyes and indulge me for a moment. Let's pretend this is track and field. And let's face it, track and field went through a car crash a few years ago, right? You found out that Tim Montgomery, who used to be the world's fastest man, was juicing. You found out that Marion Jones, who used to be the world's fastest woman, was juicing, right? You found out that some coaches were involved in providing drugs to their athletes, right? In fact, one of the people involved in the track and field uh, steroid situation, right, who apparently cooperated with authorities, has now reinvented himself, this is someone other than Alex Ariza, into a, you know, nutritionist, a nutritional consultant, a strength and conditioning coach, isn't that the term of art, for high-profile boxers. Well, just imagine, you're in track and field. You run the glamour event, the 100 meters. You've posted some spectacular times. Your career is widely viewed as one of the best ever, if not the best ever. You believe in yourself. Let's say so much that you call yourself, TBE, the best ever. But let's say that there's another guy who's posting similar times to you, right? And the rumors are that this guy might be chemically enhanced. Let's say you're all natural. Let's say the rumors are that your opponent is chemically enhanced, that he has a strength and conditioning coach who allegedly is giving him right items that you haven't taken that no one is supposed to be allowed to take right so just imagine that suddenly your opponent falls out with his strength and conditioning coach now just imagine that you're able to contact and hire that strength and conditioning coach and you have a frank conversation with that strength and conditioning coach, right? Because you're a multimillionaire. You can pay whatever is required, right? Let's say you talk with that strength and conditioning coach and you find out definitively what he was giving your opponent, right? You find out definitively whether the opponent was receiving things he wasn't supposed to receive. Right? Just, just imagine the hypothetical. Right? Now, if you're about to race your opponent in a high-profile race, right? If your opponent's on the up and up, okay, then great. You understand you're racing another giant in the profession. But let's say rightly or wrongly, you hear that your opponents cut corners in the past. And let's say because of your negotiating power, your market power, you're able to negotiate in the contract random drug testing so you know your opponent can't cut corners now. 
if you feel that your opponent was enhanced before and is no longer enhanced now do you feel, believe that it's more likely or less likely that you're gonna win the race are you gonna have more confidence knowing that your opponent can no longer cut corners or are you gonna have less confidence right think about it but there's another side to the coin isn't there let's say you're the opponent let's say that you might know you might not know right you might have awareness you might have just plausible deniability who knows right but let's say that you sense that you felt better before when you were with your strength and conditioning coach let's say you sensed that your body was more resilient had more stamina had more pop had more power when you were with your former strength and conditioning coach who's now with your opponent who now might be talking about exactly what went on in the past right isn't that a mental burden isn't that a load to get around right athletes want to be taken seriously they want to be viewed as credible if you were with a strength and conditioning coach if you're drinking shakes that your trainer claims he didn't know what was in the shakes right if you're drinking shakes that are given to you by a strength and conditioning coach and you feel at your best and then you have a falling out that strength and conditioning coach leaves and you're not quite at your best and that strength and conditioning coach is talking with your rival the guy you're gonna compete against next isn't that the kind of thing that can mentally mess you up I'll tell you I've watched sports long enough to have seen guys get busted with their hands in the cookie jar right now I'll tell you most of these athletes will at first act like Ryan Braun did they'll say whoa how could anyone ever have suspected me of any wrongdoing at any time in my career right I wouldn't be consciously in the same area code the same city the same state the same country as a performance enhancing truck right I remember Ben Johnson busted in 1988 and I remember he issued some statement that said hey you know somebody gave me a drink and there was some gooey substance in the drink right you know in other words hey you know me I would never use anything that I tested positive for like nothing that's the party line right athletes don't say all right you got me I'm taking Winstrol I'm taking this I'm taking that no 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 they don't they don't say that they come up with other stories right isn't that the way it is isn't there let's use the word shame right that's the word shame and having to acknowledge that you failed a steroid test isn't there shame in having to acknowledge that you've used steroids I've even seen athletes give press conferences where they shake their head they don't it's so shameful they don't want to acknowledge using performance enhancing drugs instead what they'll do is they'll just say you know I let down my teammates you know I let down myself I made mistakes right they can't even bring themselves to say I juiced right there's shame there's a mental part now here we have Alex Ariza 
You know, Alex Ariza may well be just a hard-working strength and conditioning coach. Right? Maybe what's in the shakes that he gave Manny Pacquiao were multivitamins. Right? Were things like biotin and, you know, if you're into minerals and stuff like that, you know that there are exotic minerals out there that, you know, are naturally occurring in the body that, you know, can do things like cut water retention and stuff like that legally that are on the up and up, right? There are a whole host of things, you know, that might make you more mentally alert in the ring that aren't illegal, you know, that really are just the kind of things you would take if you're eating the right way, right? Nutritious diet. You're eating the right meats, the right starches, and stuff like that. These are the kind of things you'd want in your body. It is completely possible that that's all Alex Louisa gave Manny Pacquiao. Right? That might be true. But we're gamblers here. We have to think about all possibilities, don't we? Right? I don't know what happened. I'm not accusing anyone of anything. But if you believe there's a possibility that Freddie Roach, as he himself has said, didn't know what was in the shakes. Right? If you believe that something's going on insofar as, you know, Alex Ariza seems to be losing jobs with superstar athletes and trainers. Right? He's worked with Freddie Roach. He's worked with Robert Garcia. You know, I'll tell you what. Looked to me like he was friends with the fighters. I'm on the internet, on YouTube, you'll notice a lot of videos where he's with Manny Pacquiao. They're comfortable. They're laughing. He's with, you know, Garcia's fighters, Brandon Rios. They're comfortable. They're laughing. Right? You know, if Alex Ariza is a great guy, if Alex Ariza is doing great work, if he's good at what he does, as Robert Garcia, the superstar trainer, has said, then why is he losing jobs? Why are guys replacing him in camps? So if you suspect, and keep in mind, the thing with plausible deniability, if they set up a system where the fighter doesn't know what he's taking, understand at a minimum the fighter would know his own body, wouldn't he? Who knows what's been happening and Manny Pacquiao fights better than Manny Pacquiao. Right? Manny Pacquiao used to be a knockout puncher. Not so much now. Right? Not so much now. Manny Pacquiao used to have outstanding stamina. Crazy stamina. If you turned on a Manny Pacquiao fight and he was all out and stuff like that, you couldn't tell if it was the first round or the tenth round. Right? Outstanding stamina. Even guys like Antonio Margarita, who themselves had great stamina, seem to pale in comparison in the later rounds to Manny Pacquiao. Now it's not so much. Right now you're noticing in Manny Pacquiao fights, he seems to be taking breathers. Look at that last Marquez fight. Is that the Manny Pacquiao who was in the first Marquez fight? You know, so... I'll agree, Father Time catches up with all of us. But let's just speculate for a moment, and it's just speculation and conjecture. Let's say Manny himself suspects that perhaps he received items in the past, shakes or whatever, from whoever, right? Not individualizing it. And let's say Manny himself senses that now it's not quite the same, right? That now things are a bit different, right? That now the world has changed, and trust me, the world used to be different, right? The world used to be different. Now the world has changed where when you say to an opponent, hey, man, I'm not going not gonna to agree to drug testing, fans are actually skeptical of you. Right back in the day, the other guy was viewed as dodging. Now fans are 
skeptical of you. So let's say you're Manny Pacquiao and you see your strength and conditioning coach in your opponent's corner. Are you going to have a Ryan Braun moment? Is this going to be the kind of thing where you kind of understand that your opponent may know more about what you took in the past, your nutritional regimen in the past, than you do? Right? Let's say Manny Pacquiao is completely innocent. Let's say he's completely clueless. Maybe he is. He'd know his own body, wouldn't he? Wouldn't he know that, hey, a few years ago I had a little bit more stamina. I had a little bit more pop in my punches. I felt better. I slept as soundly as I did when I was on HGH. Right? Now let's say now he's waking up in the middle of the night. Now there are aches and pains the next day after working out. Right? Now it's not quite the same. Right? Doesn't that present a mental dynamic that you, the gambler, needs to consider in analyzing this fight from both sides of the coin? Right? If Mayweather firmly believes, based on whatever information is available to him, that Manny Pacquiao was juicing before, and is not juicing now. Mayweather might be more aggressive, might be more confident in this fight. Mayweather stood across from Manny Pacquiao at some pre-fight event. And Mayweather, you know, saw that Manny Pacquiao is smaller than him. There's an article in the Daily Mail today where Mayweather goes further and says that he believes that Manny Pacquiao wears lifts in his shoes because he's self-conscious about his height and that Manny was probably surprised at how much bigger than him Floyd was. Right? Understand, in those comments, Mayweather's basically telling you that he himself considers himself much bigger physically than Manny Pacquiao right not just taller but bigger right I think these guys I think Pacquiao's a big man who happens to be short right but understand Mayweather doesn't see it that way Mayweather is the one who's gonna have a say on what happens in the ring so let's say Floyd is hurt from whatever source, from the information available to him, is how I'll put it. That Manny was doing something differently in the past than he's doing now. Something that might have helped him in the past. That's not going to help him in this fight. Doesn't that increase the chances that Mayweather, who is very focused on legacy, very focused on legacy, right? Calls himself the best ever. Doesn't that increase the chances that Mayweather decides to make this a statement fight? You know what I mean by a statement. You're on your way to winning a decision. That's not good enough, right? The car's in fourth gear. You're about to win. It's going to be by a few rounds. That's not good enough, right? You feel the other guy's a fraud. You feel this is a moment to demonstrate your superiority. You take the car out of fourth gear, you put it in fifth gear, you go for the knockout that Mayweather did not go for against Miguel Cotto, a fighter I personally believe Mayweather has a lot of respect for. Right? This seems to be a little bit different, doesn't it? Right? I think Mayweather believes he's been in the ring with tougher opponents than this guy. Right? Now, as I said before, it works one way or the other. If, according to the information available to Mayweather, 
Mayweather finds out that Pacquiao's always been on the up and up, that his suspicions are unfounded, then maybe Mayweather's more tentative in this fight. Right? It's up to you, the viewer, to figure out what's really going on. Was something going on in the past? Is something going on now? Let me say this, though. And I say it in the strongest terms. People have written me here online, left comments, saying, why won't you talk about Alex Ariza joining Mayweather's camp? Right? The feeling is that maybe Mayweather's juicing now. I don't believe that's the case. Maybe I'm just biased. But let me say this. I don't believe psychologically a guy would call himself the best ever if he had to cut corners to be the best ever. Right? I believe just psychologically you only call yourself the best ever if you believe that you're playing on the same level playing field that the greats in history have played on. Right? I believe psychologically Floyd Mayweather is really all about blood, sweat, tears, determination. Right? That's what I believe fuels him. You see how hard he trains. Right? Floyd's not a guy out running for government office. Boxing means too much to him. He's like Peyton Manning. Right? That's the athlete that comes to mind when I think of Floyd Mayweather. He's all in, invested in his craft, right? I don't believe a guy like that for a moment would even consider using steroids. I personally feel that the guy hires people for informational purposes, right? He hires people to make sure that those folks can't help his opponents, I don't believe he would hire anyone to give him even the stuff I was taking, creatine and uh, HGH, right? Let me also say this too. Let's not have our head in the sand here, right? The sport of boxing is no different than, let's say, track and field was or baseball was. Understand from time to time, right, people get busted for PEDs. That's what happens. PEDs haven't gone anywhere. If anything, they've gotten more exotic. You know the side effects of taking too much HGH. There's something called acromegaly, right? Jawbones that are striking, right? Sometimes protruding and stuff like that. All I'm saying is I've looked at boxing long enough to have seen guys who look like they have some of the symptoms of acromegaly. Right? Let me say when Tommy Morrison admitted that he was injecting himself with steroids, I wasn't that surprised. In the 1970s, we thought Ken Norton had a great body. Just cue up the tapes of what guys look like in the 1970s and what guys look like today. Right? Some of it's better nutrition. Some of it's not. Understand, there was a recent reigning heavyweight champion who didn't participate in the Olympics because he failed a steroid test right before the Olympics. Right? My point to you is, if we're going to look at the odds of the event, let's consider all of the dynamics. Right? Steroids, in addition to having a physical side, they have a mental side. Maybe the mental side's in play in this upcoming fight. It's possible. Right? Understand, it's going to hover, in my opinion over the event, right? 
Alex Ariza really is a lightning rod figure here, right? Either way, right? Either way. Maybe he has something to talk about. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe there's even a third possibility that he's talking about things that didn't happen or that he's not talking about things that happened, right? Just understand, he's gone from the Pacquiao camp to the Mayweather camp. That could have an impact on this fight. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online visit us at gamblersadvisory.com this is a big time event where both guys are supposed to get nine figures right we're here in the united states if you're buying the hd pay-per-view feed they're going to want you to cough up 99.99 right almost five figures right Let's just be blunt about this fight. Know the cast of characters. Know the people in the background. Right? I think that's in all of our best interest because there's going to be a lot of dynamics when these two guys start the fight. If Floyd believes that he's bigger and stronger than his opponent, right, and that his opponent doesn't have some of the advantages he used to have, that might dictate Mayweather's strategy. Food for thought. Thanks for indulging me. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments here in the comment section to this video.